a room full of boys, a girl child, hardly nine or ten years old. She is sitting in the center of room, surrounded by books. She is the only girl among boys, and is barely missing her female cousins and friends who are inside the homes instead of this school, because they are not allowed to get education alongside boys. There isn't a single functional girls' school in her village. She is born in a Baloch conservative tribe where women and girls are matter of honor. She is eldest in her family, and when she is about to be born, her parents wanted a baby boy. But their bad luck, a baby girl arrived. It was customary in her family to keep girls inside the homes, but her uncle, who is university graduated, he wanted to give her an opportunity to see the world, to be part of the society. Luckily, she has a name that could be used for both men and women. So he saw a chance to change her course of life. So he decided to raise her as a boy. At three months old, she went from a being baby girl to baby boy. She is given boys' get up. She is allowed to go outside, get education alongside boys. She is free. She is confident. She observes. She notes small, everyday injustices faced by women and girls in her village. When newspaper arrives at home, she watches. Is it passes from eldest men to youngest men? By the time when women got hold of the paper. It is old news. She completes her eighth grade year. Now fear starts to come in. This will be end of her education, because only option high school for further study is five kilometers away. Boys are boys have bicycles; they are free. But she knows her father will not allow her. Travel on her own, even she were posing as a boy. I can't let you to do that, and I don't have a time to walk you there and back. Sorry, it is impossible. She gets very upset. But a miracle happened. A long-distance relative offers to teach her ninth and tenth curricula during. Summer vacations. This is how she completed her matriculation. The girl whom I am talking about to you is me, Shamim, who is talking before you now. <laughs> From centuries, people have been fighting for their identity. People have been loved, privileged. Because of their identity, their nationality, their ethnicity, again people have been hated, denied because of their nationality, their identity, their race, their gender, their religion. Identity determines your position in the society wherever you live. So, if you ask me, I would say I hate this question of identity. Millions of girls in this world are being denied their basic rights because of being female. I would have faced same if I hadn't been raised as a boy. I am determined to continue my study to learn to be free. After the schooling, even enrolling in college was not easy for me. I went on three-day hunger strike. Then I got the permission for college. <laughs> In that way, I completed my college. Two years later, when time comes for me to go university, my father turned 
his eyes, his attention to my younger brothers. They need to be in school, get secure the jobs and support the family. And as a woman, my place was had to be home. But I don't give up. I sign up for a two years program to become a lady health visitor. Then I hear about Thardeep Rural Development Program, a non-profit organization working to empower rural communities. I sneak away. I travel five hours to interview for a position. It is first time I am farthest from my home I have ever been. I am closest to my freedom I have ever been. Luckily, I got the job, but hardest part is to facing my father. <laughs> Relatives are already scaring him about her dot, his daughter wandering off, teasing him with talk of her daughter crossing the border. When I return to home, I want nothing to more than just accept the position in Thardeep. So that night, I packed my all things in a bag and I walked into my father's room and said to him, tomorrow morning, bus is going to come in. If you believe in me, if you believe in me, you would take me, you would wake me up and take me off at the bus station. If you don't, I'll understand. Then I go to sleep. Next morning, my father was standing beside me to take me off at the bus stop. <laughs> that, day, that day, I understand the importance of words. I understand how words affect our hearts, how words play an important role in our lives. I understand words are more powerful than fighting. At TRDP, I saw there was a Pakistan which I didn't know, a country much more complex that I had realized. Till yet, I thought I had a difficult life. But here I saw what women in other parts of Pakistan were experiencing. It really opened my eyes. Some women had 11 children, but nothing to feed them. For getting water, they would walk three hours every day to Wales. Nearest hospital was at least 32 kilometers away. So if a woman is in labor, she travels by camel to get hospital. Distance is great. She may die on her way. So now this became more than just a job for me. I discovered my power. Now, as I was getting salary, so I started sending back money to my home. Relatives and neighbors were noticing this. Now, they started to understand the importance of education. By the time, some other parents started sending their daughters to school. Slowly, it became easier and acceptable for young women to be in college. Today, there isn't a single girl out of school in my village. <laughs> Girls are doing jobs in health site, even in police. Life was good. But somewhere in my heart, I realized that in my region, beyond my village, needs further change. This is also time when I joined Acumen Fellowship. Here I meet leaders like me across the country, and I saw they had taken risks in their lives. I started to understand the, that lead, what leadership really means. So I decided to go back to my region and take a position as a teacher in a remote school. A school where I have to reach by bus two hours traveling in every morning and evening. Though it was hard, but on my first day, I knew I took 
right decision. When first day I walked into school, I saw all these little shamims staring back at me, <laughs> with with dreams in their eyes, same dream of freedom which I had in my childhood. So, girls are eager to learn, but the school is understaffed. Girls sit, hopeful, learn nothing, and they leave. I can't bear to see this happening. There was no turning back. I found my purpose. I enlisted few of my friends to help me to teach. I am introducing my girls with outside the world by extracurricular activities and books. I share with them the profiles of world's best leaders like Martin Luther King and Nelson Mandela. Last year, few of our students went to college. For me, I never stopped studying. Today, I am working to complete my PhD in education, which will allow me to gain a management position in a school system, and I will be able to take more decision and play a pivotal role. in this system i believe without educating the girls we may not make this world peace we may not reduce child marriage we may not reduce infant mortality rate we may not reduce maternal mortality rate for this we have to continuously and collectively work together At least I am playing my role, though destination is not close. Road is not easy, but I have dreams in my eyes, and I am not going to look back now. Thank you.